After recently playing the Mortal Kombat 1 stress test this past weekend, I'm here to share with you my thoughts, my impressions, my pros and my cons on what I saw and what I felt playing Mortal Kombat 1. These are my honest first impressions. Now keep in mind, this is a stress test. All we were given was four characters, three cameos, and two stages, so there wasn't a lot to judge, but we can judge what we were given, which is the gameplay, the mechanics, the characters, the moveset, the cameos, and so much more. Take it one step at a time. So if you enjoy fighting game content, make sure to subscribe here for more and let's get right into it. So to kind of bounce back and forth between pros and cons, my biggest pro that I really enjoyed and saw firsthand and first thing I saw when playing Mortal Kombat 1 was how smooth and fluid the gameplay was. So in my personal experience, my personal opinion, Mortal Kombat 1 feels like a mixture of Injustice and MKX, which in my opinion is awesome. MKX is my favorite Mortal Kombat and I love Injustice. You're going to feel the injustice because of the way they, they clash in the beginning of like, oh, I'm Sub-Zero, I'm gonna beat you up, and then like kind of break apart, just like they did in, you know, Injustice series. The way the combos feel, the way the supers feel, Fatal Blows or whatever, they feel like an Injustice super. It just feels injustice -y, but it also has the fluidity and the smoothness of MKX combos, which I really enjoy. The combos and the mechanics of the game just feel very smooth, I'll tell you that right now. Now this next note is technically a con, but also it can, it can be a pro to some people. The con is that it is a very aggressive game. You have to be in your opponent's face it feels like almost every second of the fight there's not a lot of defensive options compared to other fighting games you might play like street fighter 6 or guilty gear where you have like drive impact you have drive parry you have roman cancels in guilty gear stuff like that whereas in mortal kombat 1 what we were given so far we were given like just a breaker and that's cool but then the breaker uses all of your meter so now you're kind of stuck going forward with no meter to enhance your moves or whatever and you have to save up all that meter to get a single breaker which if you wait too long and in the middle of a long combo and then you break her out of a 12 hit combo at hit nine well you kind of just only saved yourself from getting hit three more times which was it worth all three bars so there wasn't a lot of defensive options which personally i want to see a bit more defensive options for me to choose from as a fighter rather than just say okay i'm gonna block and hopefully block all their attacks and then if or when they whiff i can punish them accordingly but that's just a waiting game and if you guess wrong then you're kind of just screwed because they're gonna do another like 30 hit combo which i do the same thing i i do my 30 hit combo on them so i i understand it i just wish there was a bit more defensive options that's just me which with that being said it comes down sometimes it feels like to you know who can do the longest combo kind of game like i poke you i see you whiff now i'm gonna do my 20 hit combo which a lot of fighters might really love and i do too because i do the same thing i'm okay i punish you i'm gonna do my 20 hit combo and you ain't gonna do nothing about it because you ain't got no meter so i know you're not gonna break out of this that, that's kind of on you fam so it's like it, it it sometimes turns into a game of again who does the longest combo first which can be frustrating when it happens over and over and over again one of the coolest things that blew my mind playing the mortal kombat 1 stress test is every character has aerial combat they have aerial combos they have very specific combos meant to do in the air so one of the first things i also noticed was the game felt a bit floaty if that makes sense like you just felt like your opponent was in the air for what felt like maybe too long kind of like you were in space for a minute it was, it was a bit weird you i mean you get used to it for sure but i noticed that at first and then it was oh it's because your your character has aerial combo so meaning when you do a pop-up and they're in the air for so long you have the chance to jump up and do an actual air combo. Let's say it's square, square, triangle, and that can be canceled into an air special if you're, you know, your character has an air special. And then you can continue that from the ground if you land fast enough. That part was wild. So it's really cool and really flashy to rather than just like juggle your opponent on the ground, pop them up, and continue juggling them. You do that same thing, but now you do it in the air. And then you come back down from the air and continue your ground combo. It looks really cool. It, it is very flashy, but it's a new mechanic of like, rather than just jump up, hit them with square, and then hopefully continue on the ground, you're doing actual combos in the air. And of course, the biggest elephant in the room when it comes to Mortal Kombat 1 is the cameo system. And I'll tell you right now, it is awesome the biggest perk of the cameo system is it really changes your one main character so really if you really only want to go in and main a single character you can then choose five six seven different cameo fighters and make your character feel and play a different way six different ways because now let's say you main sub-zero but you have three four different cameos that you like a lot well now your sub-zero plays four different ways depending on who you chose for your cameo so it's a really unique mechanic they brought to the game and i'm 99 sure that cameo fighters will be what gives mortal kombat one its reputation because you're going to see not just a meta for main characters like, oh 
Liu Kang and Raiden and Sub-Zero, they're like the best S tier characters of the game. You're also gonna see that same thing for cameo fighters, cause I'll tell you right now, every cameo fighter has their own unique moves and kind of what they offer to you as a fighter. So you're gonna find that some are better than others no matter who you're playing for your main character. So we're gonna see a cameo tier list, like, oh, these cameo fighters suck, they offer nothing. These cameo fighters are amazing and they fit no matter what character you play, you're gonna see a cameo meta, which can be good and bad because you know you might want to play this one cameo but they kind of suck so now you're forced to play a better cameo even though you don't want to but it's just better decision because now you get better combos with the character that you're playing so there's a lot that goes into it but you're going to see a meta in both of those aspects and you're going to see a meta not just for one or the other but for both you're going to see okay Sub-Zero with Sub-Zero as his own cameo is absolutely broken or you know this cameo fighter with this main character really sucks so never choose that cameo if you main that character or vice versa but we're gonna see combinations that are meta so Scorpion with Kano is absolutely broken it's S tier you're gonna see those combinations also have their own meta which is wild now we have to play the game that we're given and not hope for the game we don't have right so when playing Mortal Kombat 1 speaking of cameo fighters I'm not gonna lie to you, sometimes they feel a bit forced. And what I mean by that is I know they're trying to bring the cameo fighters to the game and make them feel like, you know, a tag teamer or an assist or whatever, but they feel a bit forced at times because your cameo will run in at the middle of the combo. I mean, at the middle of the round when you win and they'll be like, hey, like Sonya Blade will come in when you win a round and say, haha, I'm here, I did something. And then they'll run out. It's a bit cheesy, but whatever. And then when you win the whole game, the cameo fighters there with their winning pose, which again, it's cool because you're chosen to cameo fighter, so that's kind of like your team up. I like that, but I'm not gonna lie to you. Sometimes I was like, would I rather have this cameo do my fatal blow with me, or would I had rather have had just my main character do a full on fatal blow by themselves? Like, it's creative on both sides, but also not creative. Like, is it more creative to have your cameo start your fatal blow and then you finish it, or would it have been more creative or more? cooler to have your main character simply do the entire fatal blow by themselves i don't know that one's a more personal biased kind of opinion but i just feel like sometimes the cameos were a bit forced because you can't not use them like you can go into a fight and choose not to press the r1 button to do your cameo fighters moves but you have to choose a cameo fighter so at that point and you might as well just use them in a fight because they don't pull from your enhanced bars. They don't pull from your health like a fatal blow might. They pull off their own simple bar system. So it's like, you might as well just use them. So not that they're forcing you to use them, but they're saying, hey, this is pulling from their own resource. And so you have them, so you might as well just use them. So though you might not want to, you're gonna go, well, I, I have them and I'm kinda, I, I don't like any of the cameos, but I, I have to use them in my fight, so I gotta choose one, right? Which I guess can be a good or bad thing depending on how you view it. Now, a con that can be considered like, well, you gotta deal with it, is the game feels a bit floaty to me because of the air combo. So though the air combos are great, and like I just said, they feel really satisfying to pull off. The game feels a bit floaty. You do get used to it that you say, okay, this is just how the game flows. This is how the game works. But when I put my opponent in the air, it just feels a bit too floaty. Like they, they, they sometimes feel like there's not a lot of weight to them. I feel like I'm fighting Kirby sometimes. I just want a bit more weight to some of the characters when they float in the air. But again, that's because your characters have air actual, you have, you have actual air combos to do in the air that you, have to have your opponent float up to do so I, I get it. it makes sense but it can just take a bit getting used to so keep that in mind when jumping in to mortal kombat 1 it's not gonna feel heavy like mk11 might have i'll tell you right now one of the biggest things i noticed when i first opened up the mortal kombat 1 game was it looks amazing even even without the cutscenes, the game the characters the ui the colors all look stunning there was not one thing that i saw that i was like i really don't like that honestly even the ui at times i was like ah they could have fixed that which they might still but regardless of that the game itself the colors the stages the character their models everything looks awesome like of course one of the better looking and more realistic fighting games we've ever seen every time i saw a new thing i was like oh that just looks great with the direction that mortal kombat 1 is headed into i'm surprised they did not add the running mechanic back in or the kind of air grabbing meaning like grab your opponent out of the air to do your actual grab like mortal kombat x offered that was really cool because a lot of brutalities ended in a grab so being able to grab your opponent out of the air for a simple grab to end the combo was really cool for that one reason but also to end it in a brutality was really cool 
and the dashing the dashing in the game actually felt a bit slower like i dashed like two feet and so i was like man that's not that's not really a good dash like, i feel like walking a lot of the time or jumping in which is really committal which means you're either going to jump in and hopefully hit your air hit or your hair combo or you're going to get anti-aired or just hit out of it so no running no air grabs there's just a couple mechanics and i'm like i feel like if they added just might make the game just that much more better. I'm not in charge of the Nether Realm. I'm just here to make a video on what I think of the game. But those are just things that I wish they might have added or might consider adding. But because there's no defense, to make it a pro though, if you want to think positively, it's a very aggressive game. So if you like that, it's gonna feel very satisfying to hit your long as crap combos. You're gonna hit them, pop them up, do an air combo, enhance a special move in the air, pop them back down, bounce them, do another long combo, end in a super move or a fatal blow. And that's gonna feel really cool. And it does, I promise you. It feels awesome. But what's happening to you? You're like, oh my gosh, this is so much. A small note that I did not like in MK11 was MK11 for brutalities. I'm a big brutality fan. I love doing brutalities because fatalities, it's like, oh yeah, anybody could just do down, down triangle and get a brutality. I mean, a fatality, sure. But to hit a brutality and, and you know, at the end of a combo, to have your last hit do a brutality is really satisfying. And what I did not like in MK11 was the finish him popped up in the middle of your combo interrupting you and saying okay well now you're messing up my timing and yeah you could say skill issue and get used to it but it was just so annoying to have to like deal with the finish him in the middle of my combo then end a brutality if i didn't drop it whereas in mk1 they have a similar thing but the finish him does not pop up instead there's a quick slow-mo moment that happens to let you know okay the game's over you win end this combo in a brutality if you can i do like that a lot better it's not quite as smooth or as fluid as mkx offered but it's a better step in the direction that we want to go than mk11 offered because mk11 just completely ruined it by finish him in the middle of your combo very frustrating but mk1 has mostly fix that overall the game feels and looks amazing i cannot wait to see who the characters are on the main roster who they bring for cameos all the different combinations we're going to have what the cameos offer when it comes to move set what the characters offer when it comes to move set what they bring to the game with you know fatalities brutalities quitalities everything they offer just is so so clean so smooth so fluid i love all of it and the game looks amazing cameos are a really good new unique mechanic to the franchise and really think they really Really shake it up a little bit make the game feel fresh and new would i recommend based off what i've played so far mortal kombat 1 to a new player absolutely it's got its problems and they're gonna get fixed i'm sure of it as of right now i still recommend it. it's a lot of fun it's a blast very rewarding and satisfying to pull off all these fun combos and see the new characters or just see the characters we know in a new game it's really cool my biggest recommendation is just enjoy the game you get and don't hope for the game you don't have i know it sounds weird just enjoy what you got and if you do that i promise you you'll love it these are just my thoughts though let me know down below what do you think of mortal kombat 1 so far from what you've seen or from what you played do you like it do you hate it what would you change what would you not change let me know down below in your fighting game journey make sure to take it one step at a time and i will see you in the next one